Good morning and welcome to this week's vlog. Um, I am going to show you guys how to make some rose facial oil, like a rose lavender facial oil, as well as a echinacea tincture. You're gonna see some fun kitty stuff. Um, but to get started, I just wanted to share with you, I have this, my, my daughter bought me a rose back in, like when we bought this house for Mother's Day. It was a beautiful climbing yellow rose. Um, it was actually in a tree form and then we let it go and it was a big climber. It's gorgeous. It was just a beautiful yellow rose, but it got killed with black spot, which we have a lot of here because we get a bit too much rain and we had, it, it took it and we had to get rid of, we had to chop it down. So um, I, when we were cleaning up the rose area and we cut the bushes down and we put cardboard and everything, I saw this little bit coming out from the cardboard and I'll show it to you, it was growing sideways. And let me just show you. So all that was coming out was this right here, and it was green and looks healthy. There's no, there's no spot on it um, anywhere. Um, I'm gonna have to probably cut that off, but I planted it. It had a dead stick right here, and that stick, you can see I cut it right, right there. It was, it was attached there, and the bottom was green, the bottom of the stick, and the top was brown. So I dug it up and there was no leaves or anything. This wasn't here. None of this was here. And I planted it. And now look, friends, I have a healthy little baby rose starting along with a weed. And I'm so excited. So I can probably cut that off. I can maybe plant that up the right way and it may root. I do have rooting gel too. So maybe I can get two of them going, but I'm getting a baby rose started. So I'm excited. I think this is the yellow one. It, there is a chance that it may not be, but I think it is the yellow Mother's Day rose my daughter gave me like seven years ago, and I couldn't be happier that it's coming back. Anyway, I'm so excited because it was an absolutely beautiful yellow rose, and it was special because it came from my daughter. Um, it was when we first moved in the house, so it's been like, I don't know, six, seven years ago. Anyway, I'm going to get a couple of rosemary sprigs because I'm going to um, make a little, just a countertop cleaner and um, I've got a lemon that's going bad and I'm gonna use the lemon and the rosemary and the vinegar and we're gonna make a little tiny homemade cleaner. Um, so that is what I'm out here harvesting now. I'm just gonna take, oh, well, I don't even know like when I cut from this where I should take it from. So when I cut it last time, it was like winter time. Here's kind of a big long sprig here. I guess you know what else would be good since I'm putting lemon and I've got a lot of lemon balm. Maybe I'll stick some lemon balm in there to infuse with it too. So I don't really need a lot of this. So we'll just grab, that is probably enough because I also have fresh lemon to put in. And then we're gonna snip some of our lemon balm off because I have so much lemon balm. All right, friends. So that is what we're dealing with. And let me go show you how to make it. Okay, so here are the ingredients. Well, first of all, if this was a lemon um, vinegar and essential oils, uh, one that I made, um, which we've been using. I just used it today actually to clean some stuff with the cats and the essential oils made it not smell so bad. I'm making a new one here and just an old spaghetti jar. This is so all your, whenever you eat oranges and stuff, you just put your rinds in here and you infuse. The longer you infuse it, more of the essential oils come out and then you're gonna empty this and um, throw the, the rinds away that are in there and uh, it's ready to use. But I think I am also going to add a sprig of lavender or actually I'll probably add a little lemon to that one as well. This one's just going to be a small one. You need, I got um, distilled or uh, filtered water about half. It's one, one part water, one part vinegar, white vinegar. So you've got white distilled vinegar. That's what I'm using. Lemon rind. Um, or peel or whatever. I probably just put a couple slices in there. I'm using some lemon balm and then I'm using the um, sprigs of lavender. Um, actually, you could probably keep the lavender, the rosemary, um, you could probably keep it in there. Since it's a little, I'm not putting a ton in that. I'm gonna put this sprig, if I can open it in uh, this one. Sometimes the vinegar makes it hard to open, so I tried not to shut it hard. And then I'm going to pull the leaves off of the uh, lemon balm and stick that in. So um, hang tight and I'll show you. Okay, I was able to get the top of this off, so I am going to stick this sprig of rosemary in this one. And then 
we already have the rosemary in this one. So we're gonna just take off the leaves. You probably could put the whole thing in here, but I'm just putting the leaves in, which is where most of the essential oils come from. And this one I'm making here is ready to use in about a week. So um, you can actually leave the rosemary and the lemon balm in there. Um, now we got a little, I'll take that, pull that bad part off. Okay, so we got rosemary in here. We have our, oh, a bug. It's a little green bug. Well, I don't know where he is. He's probably swimming in the water now. Anyway, I want to rinse that before you do it. Um, so, see, so you can see this was just in there rotting. So I'm going to just cut that part off. Oh, that's bad all the way through. Let's see how bad. Okay, so let me throw this as garbage. And we have our lemon. Now, it says use the rind. I'm actually going to use the lemon because I am going to not keep the stuff in here. Um, and I'm just going to make a little one of these, too. So I have this container which had a pink grapefruit countertop spray, which I used all the time that my kids gave me at Christmas. Um, I'm going to use that and um, fill it for just a countertop spray. So I'm going to take the whole lemon because it, I'm going to use this fairly quickly, like I said, within a week. Um, and this other one that I've been making is just about ready. So I'm just going to diffuse this for about another week. In fact, I think we're going to add, um, lemon also has some cleaning properties in it, both the rind and the lemon itself. So I think I'm going to add a ha another half to both. And then I got to fill this one up with vinegar. There we go. So there's that one. And you, you can just like, basically once I... Once I empty this and have, um, I'll, I may just add it to this. Um, I gotta still add essential oils, but I'll do that at the end. Um, so there's that one that's just going to keep uh, marinating. And now this one, we'll add in, you could add essential oils to this too if you don't like the smell or it's not strong enough, but I'll wait and see if it needs it. So that's the white vinegar and I'm just using like reusing stuff. This is an old, um, I gotta find the top and where I put it now, but this is the um, an old spaghetti jar that I'm using. And there's your cleaner right there. You let it sit for a week and then you, um, and then you pour it in your, your container and you can use it on the top. It's kind of pretty, isn't it? But it'll all infuse in there. So we're gonna just let that sit and we have a little countertop cleaner now. Good to go. Okay, one more thing I have to do is I made an echinacea tincture. This is just echinacea, echinacea plant, dried echinacea in um, um, alcohol. And I have a bowl and I have a strainer that I put some cheesecloth over because we're going to squeeze that um, because this material will hold a lot of the, uh, it's going to hold a lot of the, oil. This doesn't make as much as you think it would. So I'm going to actually use this bottle as a, well, I think it'll be okay. All right. So I'm going to pour this in. This was done for 11. Um, it's been about little six weeks or so, which is what you need to do. Um, so there it is right there. And then I'm going to pour it and I'll give you some feedback on what echinacea is actually good for too. Okay, so let me just show you how much liquid that gave me. It actually, it's still coming out, you can see right there. So we're gonna let that drain, but I'm also gonna just take this cheesecloth, kind of put it in a ball and squeeze it to get all of the goodness out this is potent, it's very good for you. I'll give you some ideas of what to do with it, um, how much to take all of that. But it's basically really good for your immune system to keep you healthy, but it has a lot of other really good benefits too. So that's what I just wanna go through with you guys in a little more detail. All right, so now that that is out, I've got a dropper bottle and I'm going to Put it in here this might uh, this is gonna be more than I need so um, I'm gonna get a little funnel hold on all right this isn't this is a little big for this so what I'm gonna do is just use my teaspoon here and do this one by one until 
we get it in. I didn't put the label on it yet because um, I suspect I'm going to make a little mess here. And I'm going to need to, you know, this would be easier if I can take this off. Hold on. Right now I have about a quarter of a cup in there. Let me take this off. I might, I think I have other bottles too, so I'll, I'll make whatever I can make with this. I'm gonna speed this part up for you. And on the screen, you're gonna see different uses. <laughs> and you take one ml to five mls up to three times a day um, you want to take it right when you start feeling bad on the onset of um, getting sick if you're using it for immuno uh, reasons and in that case you do want to you don't want to take this every day you want to just take it when you're getting started um, when you start to feel sick and um, you want to take in the beginning like a little bit more <laughs> um, it's better to take less days, but more in the beginning. Um, if you have any autoimmune issues and you're on any medicines for that, please check with your doctor. I am not a doctor. Um, so if you're on other medications, check and make sure that you can take this. Uh, and you want to just store it in a cool, dark place. The dark amber bottles are better for this um, tincture um, so that you keep the sunlight out of it. So there we go. Okay, I just did, I just like scratched myself and now I'm red. Or maybe I got a bug bite. Oh no, I did get a bug bite. That's a bug bite. You know what I get when I get those bug bites? This is gonna, right in the middle of my forehead, this is a whole bug bite and it's gonna get worse. That's just the beginning. Oh no. <sighs> um, lavender oil, I'm gonna put my oil on it. That should help. How's the papers doing? Oh, stop that hissing, Mr. Grumpy. Stop that hissing. Oh, stop that. Stop that. You're all hissing, no bite. You're all hissing, no bite, you little mess. He just doesn't even know what to do with himself. And now this one, this one, sweet girl. You sweet girl. I know, I see you looking at me out of your one eye, Mr. Grumpy. I see you. I see you. You want more pets? You just want to hiss, but you actually want more pets. Because you see your girlfriend getting them? Was she your sister? Yeah. Oh, don't, don't pretend you don't like it. You love it, Mr. Grumpy. Who loves it so much? You just don't want to admit it because you're grumpy. But you do love it. You do love it, huh? It just takes you a minute to love it. Every time I come in here, he hisses and spits at me. But he actually loves being cuddled. He just doesn't want to admit it. She admits it because she just is a social butterfly. They're sleepy because they're on a heat mat right now. And they lost their sister this morning, so. I'm going to bring them out and socialize them a little bit. They're not locked in here at all. They have the run of the whole bathroom. They're usually running around being wild animals. I see you, pretties. I see you. Look at your pretty eyes, Mr. Grumpy. 
You got the prettiest blue eyes. I know, just be the old grumpy boy. He's a chunk of monk too, look at this guy. He is a chunk compared to his sister. She's getting chubby too, but she's like way smaller than he is. I see you. I see you, pretty girl. I think Grumpy is a boy. Mr. Grumpy is, oh my gosh, you guys are so stinking cute. So stinking cute. I could eat you both up, you're so cute. All right, step one of making a rose water or rose oil for your face, which has tons of therapeutic um, skincare benefits, which I'll tell you about. But this is just some rose petals for, from my garden, um, and I just grabbed some of them, and you want to push them down in the water and just clean them. Make, this helps just get if there was any little bugs or critters or anything. You want to get them off, and then we're going to lay them out. Oh, this one's still in a rosebud form. Um, we're going to lay them out here and so we're going to soak up the water and let them dry for a couple of hours. So once you get them kind of rinsed, just sort of spread them around on your plate as best you can. And you can use like, you put paper towels over it to kind of soak up some excess water or you can just like use a, a cloth or something. That cloth is not super clean though. It, I used it to get makeup off my face. So I'm going to use paper towels. They're pretty too, aren't they? They're going to fall off anyway, so might as well use them and use them in a way that will help you improve your skin. Um, so much good stuff is, it's just, it's got antioxidants. It's just so good for your skin. And then the oil we're going to use has vitamin E added in, which is good for moisturizing your skin too. Um, yeah, so it was a good thing we soaked it because there are little, some little particles and things in there in the water. I don't know if they're bugs, but they look like they might be. Yeah, see that? See how dirty the water was? We're going to dump that. All right, now I'm just going to get some, um, I'm just going to get a uh, paper towel and kind of lay it over there and soak up any extra moisture. And you're going to let this dry a couple hours, okay? And then we're going to put them in a jar, a mason jar. And hope my kitties don't come after it and try to eat it, because you know how my cats are. I could probably leave this on top of it, honestly, but it's kind of wet. All right, I'm just going to let it, I'm just going to let this air out and just dry out a little bit. Leave that to do its thing till step, till the next step. Okay, guys, it is a couple hours later, so I'm just going to, these are dry enough. I'm just going to take and put all of these in the mason jar, just shove them down in there. Now you can use a variety of oils, sunflower oil and grapeseed oil is what I have. I'm going to use the grapeseed oil. Actually, both of them have vitamin E, but this right here, it's got vitamin E, which is nourishing also for your skin. And then the, these have some vitamin C and stuff in them as well. And we're going to just cover them. This is done in like a day or two um, with the grapeseed oil. And then after this is done, infusing, then you're going to pour it through a strainer and get rid of the little rose petals after they've done their job. Make sure everything is covered. Let it infuse in that oil. Top on. This isn't the top that goes on, but it'll, it'll be fine. I think they're all universal. And there we are. So we're just going to let that sit and infuse. It's so pretty, isn't it? It is 6.30 in the morning, but I had to come outside because what do my wondering eyes see but a pretty little Cosmo, the first one this season. Yay, look at 
at you, beautiful. I can't remember what mix this was in here. It might be like a cupcake or a, um, might have been like a pink and peachy Cosmos. I can't remember. But uh, that's coming in. The Cosmos are doing very well. They're coming in nice, not too tall. Um, I have something here that looks like a Snapdragon, but I'm not quite sure. Um, down here, this will get very large. Um, and then we, these are these won't do nothing this year. These are hollyhocks. They're just going to get foliage this year. And then this will get tall. This is a Cleome. Oop, I'm not even showing you. This is a Cleome right here. Um, I think it's purple. I don't remember. So, um and these are doing really well. We've got the diamond frost on it. I've been sort of the problem with this bush is getting very large is I have to like I feel like I have to deadhead it almost every day. Like this one I need to plant in the landscape because this one is just struggling up here. Um so I'm gonna plant this one in the landscape, I think. In fact, I'll move this down to me today to remind me. Because this one is not doing well. Um, in here, these were planted from seed, these little alyssum guys. I got them all over. This, we got a, um, the, this is a, this is a Cleome too, I think. Maybe not. It might be what this is too. This is, these two things are, um, ground cherries, I believe. This is a Dahlia from seed, and this is obviously a tomato. Um, then over here, it's just so early, nothing's really open. This is an experiment because I want to see... I could have just put, and probably should have just put one in, but we have the bubble, Vista bubblegum right here, and this gets very prolific. This one plant alone will go all the way down to the ground, and it had enough, it would have had enough room to go all the way through this entire pot. I have, I'm excited about this. This will go down to the ground too. This is the um, Silver Dichondra Falls. So you can see I've got two more little shoots starting here. And then this is the new, I think it's rock and raspberry or something. I forgot what it's called, but this one has, has got a different growth habit than this one. So this one should cascade down. I'm not sure what this one's going to do because it's been going up. So it'll go up so far and then I think it'll probably get heavy and go down. I don't really know. But my goal was I wanted to see which one did better in the pot. Um, and that pot is from my son, Tyler. I just love this pot. Also, we have some nasturtiums uh, coming in here. You can see they are all beginning to open up and these are edible you can eat these you can add these to sal salads they have like a peppery taste um, it's time to pull these babies out and i may just do what i did with the last batch i saved them and i'm pressing them because they're just so pretty these ones lasted a little bit longer in here but it's gotten so high that's um a poppy right there so um we'll see and i don't know what that is it looks like it's kale or food doesn't it looks like some kind of a kale or something probably is so um i also need to get this guy planted today too so I'll put him here this is a cute little black lace elderberry it gets very large and i think this is bacopum but all it rained all it's it's getting ready to reflower it's got to rejuvenate because yeah it's got to rejuvenate up oh, here's some old flowers on this side can kind of see what it when it was in bloom how pretty it was oh there's some cardinals down there those are a little uh, male and female cardinal <laughs> um, and these are boards that are in good condition so that we are going to use um, for our deck Robert's going to have our he's got to get our dimensions he's going to have our deck pretty done and also we're going to have um, my countertops he's got a counter guy and that guy's going to Replace my countertops as well. So, um, actually, we could probably do that anytime because I think the guy's moving and then we won't have access. So, I need to get Robert on that. I want that done like pronto in there. Our cover's so ugly. And that's not even going to be the area we keep because eventually we're going to knock out the wall, and make one big kitchen. But financially, I can't do that right now. So, I can do the countertop. So, why not make the kitchen at least cuter while we wait, right? So, because it won't be that much. I mean, I'm thinking like, or five hundred dollars for that piece in there depending on what we purchase it won't be a lot I like, totally in my bare feet but look uh, some of the poppies are open and I wanted to show you while well, they were open today another one little red ones like a pile of red ones here's one that's like red and white 
um, I think this was just a random mix that I planted. Um, there's a whole bunch here that are getting ready to open. We don't know what color they're going to be, so we shall end over there too. So we'll see. This is interesting. Look. That I think was the old pot head. I don't remember. No, that was from something else. That's like a ranunculus or an anemone. I cannot remember. And I don't know if there's more of those. The rest of these to me look like they're poppies that are going to open. I did want to go and see these hollyhocks over here because they're purple and they were, I was expecting them to be pink. There was a pink poppy right there. There's another little red one down there. It's just all, they're all starting to open. Up here's a white one. Beautiful. Let's see, you can't really see it, but it has little, it's whited out, but it's, it's white and little yellow on the inside. Um, yeah, so we're, oh, this one's pink. Okay, look at that. This guy opened. So that's the color I thought they all were going to be, um, pink. And they're not. This one is a beautiful, beautiful dark purple like a wine color with white edges. This one we don't know yet. Oh, look, I'm getting ready to have another another ranunculus. This one's um, gonna be pink. And then we got my our little creeping minute, uh, morning glory growing there, blue. Oh, yeah. There's the larkspur. I need to trim this guy back. Everything else over here is doing pretty good. Robert's got the extra piece of wood he needed to finish the top of that off for me. Um, so he's gonna work on that hopefully today. And that gara is humongous, humongous. So anyway, everything's coming in. My uh, Sylvia was huge last year, came back. Beautiful. Yeah, everything's looking good. Down here, there's more um, hollyhocks that are just foliage this year that are going to grow next year. So I'm excited to see what that is. Um, I've got a coneflower kind of growing amongst these, <laughs> which haven't opened yet. These lilies. Hopefully they'll open soon. I don't know why they haven't. Oh, there's one starting to poke open. Let's go on the other side over here. I got some um, that's going in today. This is all compost. Well, hopefully going in today. So look at this bush. This is a proudberry coralberry, and I've had it three years and it did nothing. I planted it for the first time in a new spot in full sun, which is where it wanted to be. And this sucker, you can see the difference because I'm drinking, I'm drinking tea. Okay, so this sucker was only about this big, and all of this growth on it is new from putting it in the right location. So maybe I'll get berries on that sucker soon. I gotta be careful for Mr. Snakey. I'm not paying attention, but we're getting one ready to open right here. These are a beautiful pink um, and they have multiplied. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six there, seven. And then we have these babies that won't bloom. I don't think this year, um, these little ones, eight, nine, there's a bunch of them. So. And back here is a dahlia that grew from last year that came up um, that I thought all the dahlias are. Here's another little baby one. That'll bloom. Ten. So from, I planted, I think, three. And now there's ten of these big, huge lilies. And they're going to be gorgeous. They're such a bright, pretty, cherry pink. Uh, but anyway, this is a dahlia. Eleven. From um, last year that it didn't die. The rest of them did. All the... The rest, it, um, the roots got too wet here and they died, but that lived. I want to see, well, I want to see what these poppies, if they're all going to be white, because they're all in the same, but I don't think so. And then that one is massive over there. So I want to see what that opens up to. Maybe it'll open today. We shall see. It's looking a little ratty. It'll look better when I put the compost and stuff down. These are ready to be cut back, but I've been holding off because... Mama Bird is in there right now. And she swooped at me yesterday because I got too close. Oh, you can't see her. You can kind of see her. She's right there. She's sitting with her baby birds. 
So she's got a nest in there, so we're gonna leave her alone. Are you cleaning your sister, good boy, Grumpy? Because you wouldn't let her eat earlier. I had to feed her separate because Grumpy was pushing her out of the bowl, pushing, like shoving his paw in her face when she tried to eat. Now you're being all sweet, huh? Oh, maybe not. You're telling your sister you're sorry and you don't want her to leave you? Oh, you're pushing her out. You're gonna push her out? Okay, push her out so she can go eat maybe? What are you doing to her? What are you doing, Mr. Grumps? Grumpy, what are you doing to your sissy? Be nice to her, she's little and you're big. Okay, be nice. No more hissing from Mr. Grumpy, by the way. He's all happy now. Are you, are you trying to play? Are you trying to play? Are you trying to play, you little, you little baby panther? Are you trying to play? Are you trying to play? Is that what we're doing? Is you trying to play? Yeah. Are you trying to play? Yeah. I'm trying to play, baby. You look at the jackrabbit. You're trying to play. You're feeling better. You're feeling better. Little baby pamper. Little baby pampers. You want some yoves? I got a. You want some yoves, huh? What you doing, baby Dora? Hmm? What you doing, baby Dora? Want get out? Let's show everybody how little you are. All right, knocking stuff over. Last day the kitties are probably going to be here, and they're going to go to uh, back at Robert's place. They made a mess. I had to scrub this whole floor today. There's Mr. Grumpy, but he's not grumpy anymore. He's a sweet boy, but he does like to play now. He wants to play. You want to play? You want to play? You want to play? Come on. Come on out. They're now kind of excited when we come home. They're excited to see us. And then we have Little Miss. <laughs> Little Miss Dora the Explorer. So cute you are. Yeah, so cute. Today, Mr. Grumpy wouldn't let her eat. I had to give him two different bowls because every time she put her face in the same bowl, he literally would push her away and not let her eat. So... They're doing good. I'm in my PJs. I'm getting ready to go to sleep for the night. Is this your last day here? Watch. Oops. Oops, come here. I didn't mean to scare you. Come here. Let me see if, he do, if he'll do it again. Here, you want to eat? You want to eat? Go ahead and eat. Show them what you do, Mr. Grumpy. You want milk, baby? Mm -hmm. Come here, look at me. Mr. Grumpy's got some claws. You've got some claws, baby. You want to get up on my lap, sweet girl? You want me to hold you? And get better. And get better. <laughs> Don't act like you're scared. You are totally not scared anymore.
compost, but this is starting to look like a pretty little cottage garden. It's just, it's coming along. We've got our girl going crazy over here. This is getting ready all to bud up. It hasn't bloomed yet. Um, we have our <clears throat> sedum. We have, I need to get in here because these guys need to be, I need to tie these guys up here. These are sweet peas. And there's also some salvia back there. Um, I don't know what color this one is, but this one bloomed that gorgeous, like dark, like purple and pink. And then and we've got everything, like stuff starting to come in. You can see we've got the verbena coming in. But for, um, look at the poppies. This one hasn't bloomed yet. It's like a like, little damage, but we have poppies. There's a big, beautiful white one, salvia. Um, then this one came in truer to the original, which was pink, which I love. And look at, these are all getting ready. Hold on, I'm too close, but. Look how pretty this is. And then this is, these have opened up. Some of these have finally opened. It's a beautiful. And behind it is a pinky winky, which is starting to, um, get, oh my God, it's just massive this year. It's just massive. Um, and then over here, we have Morgara that's way up to the sky for some reason. It just went crazy. Everything's just coming in so pretty. It's starting, the pots are starting to fill out. Um, even though i got to take some of that out, um, everything's looking great. We've got coneflowers. This, need, this bed needs a lot of work, a lot of work. But we have coneflowers beginning to bloom. We have some stuff that carried over the, from last year. Look at all these little red poppies amongst the yellow pansies. So beautiful. Um, it's just sort of littered with pansies, and I, I hope that they're going to, they're going to reseed. So um, these guys are finally starting to grow. Um, you can see a couple of them in there. They're going to take off. Everything's looking fabulous. Oh, there's one here, too. That no one's doing well. Hey, guys. So um, I just um, started... Um, a dandelion chamomile salve oil that, and then we're going to turn it into a salve for skincare. And, um, right now I'm doing a face oil. This is a second infusion, um, that you've seen in the, um, this vlog and I'm going, it was a double infusion. So I infused it once and I wanted it to be stronger. Um, the oil I used has vitamin E in it, which is also amazing for your skin and a bunch of rose petals from the garden. So I'm going to strain the plant matter out now and pour it into a jar and then, um, it's pretty much ready to go, but I'm also going to add some lavender, uh, some pure lavender essential oils into it, which is really good for skincare as well. So um, this is also good for like acne and um, wrinkles and really deep moisturizing. It's for your face, your hand, your body, if you have rough spots in your elbows, arms, anything like that, it's great for, and the lavender also has antioxidant, anti-inflammatory properties, which is good for bug bites and um, skin soothing properties as well. I can't find my lavender right now though, because Robert got a bunch of bug bites the other day and he borrowed it and now I don't know where it is. What is this one? This is lemon. That's not it. So um, I am going to just diffuse it right or, you know, drain it right now and put it in the jar and then I'll add the essential oils after. I still have to find the little dropper bottles too. I may have to buy those. So um, right now we're just going to get the oil done. All right. I just have a bowl and a strainer. I got this strainer on... Um, Amazon. I'll link it for you guys. These jars that I got, also I got on Amazon. They come in clear too, but I got pink and, oh, they have pink and these ones are the pretty blue. Um, I'm probably going to get pink as well. So let me get that out of there and then we're going to press that with our hands and get all the goodness out of it. All right. I have a little strainer also. This came with a kit that I used for my vanilla, um, but I'm sure you can find these little rubbery funnels on um, Amazon too. And I still got this stuff down there. So I'm going to gently pour this in and if I don't get it all in sometimes I don't I make a little mess it's fine let's see how much oil we have here and I'm going to pour that goodness in there because what you're seeing is some of the stuff from the roses and that is absolutely fine it's all the goodness and flavoring from the roses so here is our oil 
and we'll put our top on and then which i have to find oh i think the top's washing this one will work I'll use this one this goes to a different jar but i think this one i had on it so i'm gonna put this on and i'm gonna add the essential oils and then we can pour it in jars and label it and it's ready to go i found one bottle so i just made natural rose lavender facial oil with vitamin e 2024 i had an apothecary tag so i used that and this is the oil I used. It was Uterra Lavender Oil. Um, and I still have all of this left. So that's gonna make quite a few. I just need more bottles. Actually, I forgot I had some amber bottles I bought from Amazon. So I've already added the um, lavender and I've started filling this up, but I have this big dropper. And this is, cause these bottles are small, quite a bit easier to get the oil in. So um, that is what we're going to do to fill them up. And I'd just rather move it along Got both feet but in different waters I need space more than orders I'd just rather move it along I know how you're feeling Cause sometimes I do tight Not tonight You're gonna hear me Gonna dance it off goodbye had two more bottles and I still can probably make two more but I'm out of bottles so I made rose lavender facial oil there we are I'm gonna put them with the other things